Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I am going to try to explain to you the Hodgkin-Huxley model on voltage-gated sodium channels in less than 10 minutes. So with that, let us give, give this a go. So here is our hypothetical cell, and our hypothetical cell has two fluid compartments. The first is the intracellular fluid, or the ICF, and the second is the interstitial fluid, or the ISF. The ISF is present outside the cell, and the ICF is present inside the cell. Now outside the cell, we have a sodium concentration of around 150 millimolar. And inside the cell, the sodium concentration is much smaller, with it being around 15 millimolar. Now inside our hypothetical cell, we have a voltage-gated ion channel for sodium, or the voltage-gated sodium ion channel. Now the voltage-gated sodium channel is an ion channel that opens in response to voltage changes in the cell. Now when this channel opens, what happens is, is that sodium will flow down its electrochemical gradient from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. And we can uh, predict this through calculating the driving force. If you assume that the membrane potential is going to be around negative 70 millivolts, we can calculate that the, that the driving force on sodium will be around a negative 130 millivolts. So therefore, since sodium is a cation and the driving force is negative, sodium will flow down its electrochemical gradient into the cell. Now, as physiologists, we want to have a rigorous understanding on voltage-gated ion channels and their kinetics and mechanics. So the way that we study their mechanics and kinetics is primarily through a method called the voltage clamp. So what is a voltage clamp? Well, the voltage clamp is a method that is used in order to investigate the mechanics and kinetics of an ion channel. So what the voltage clamp is, is that you'll have a micropipette, and what happens is, is that the lab technician will take this micropipette and put the micropipette really close to the plasma membrane. And this pipette is so small that it can actually surround one single channel, as we can see here. So then what the technician will do is they'll apply suction to the pipette and sort of close the channel off from the rest of the membrane. So it basically insulates it and it insulates the charge and it also insulates it physically so that we can I, so that we can examine the properties of this channel. So then what the lab technician will do is they'll apply a certain voltage to the voltage gated sodium channel or whatever channel they're investigating and basically see the current that comes out. So in order to understand this let's come up with a experiment. So in this experiment we are going to apply a stimulus to a single voltage-gated sodium channel. And the stimulus will be a depolarizing stimulus. And a depolarizing stimulus is a stimulus in which we make the voltage of the cell more positive. And what we're going to see in that stimulus, in, in other words, what we're going to measure is the current of sodium that results from this stimulus. So we're going to do three trials. And in this first trial, we come up with something like this. So right here is the stimulus voltage, and what we see here is that the cell is initially at rest, and then when we start the stimulus at around here, we depolarize the voltage, hold that depolarized voltage for a couple of milliseconds, and then take the stimulus off, allowing the cell to come back to rest. And what we do during this time is just measure the sodium current. So what you can see here in this initial first trial is that there is no sodium current when the cell is at rest. So the voltage-gated sodium channel is going to be closed at rest. When we set the depolarizing stimulus on the cell, what we see is that the voltage-gated sodium channel is going to open quickly. And this is because right when we start that stimulus, we get a strong inward current of sodium. And an inward current, just so you know, is always negative. And this is why we see a negative current here. So what we see here is that the current becomes negative when the stimulus hits and the voltage-gated sodium ion channel opens quickly. And the current goes on for a little while and then it suddenly stops before the stimulus ends. 
So that's a little weird, right? Voltage-gated sodium channels are expected to stay open during the entire length of the depolarization. So this is not what we would expect to see without prior knowledge. So what we see here is that the voltage-gated sodium channel opens quickly, but it also shuts down quickly. So let's do another experiment to see if this experiment is right. So we do another trial, and what we see here is a similar circumstance. We see that the voltage-gated sodium cha channel opens rather quickly, but however this time, the voltage-gated sodium channel is open for an even shorter amount of time. Let's do a third trial. When we do a third trial, we see a similar sort of thing again. We see that the voltage-gated sodium channel opens quickly, stays open for a little bit, and then shuts down very quickly. So what is going on here? Well, before we can explain what is going on, let's give a quick summary of the results of this experiment. So from this experiment, we see three main uh, things. The first conclusion is that voltage-gated sodium channels open very quickly in response to depolarization. The second thing that we notice is that voltage-gated sodium channels spend most of their time closed. And then the third thing that we noticed from this uh, experiment is that the voltage-gated sodium channels shut down really quickly as well. So what is going on here? Well, in order to understand what is going on with the voltage-gated sodium channels, we have to look at an energy diagram. And the thing that you have to note before we look at these diagrams is that the greater amount of energy that something has, the more unstable it is. So let's take a look. So what this graph is showing you is that there are three main states for the voltage-gated sodium channel. There is a closed state, an open state, and an inactive state. So the closed state for the voltage-gated sodium channel does not allow current to pass through it because the channel is closed. The open state allows current to pass through it because the channel is open. And the inactive state does not allow current to flow through it. And what we see here is that the energy diagram for the resting or hyperpolarized state is that the open state is actually relatively unstable. And the reason why the open state is relatively unstable in the resting hyperpolarized state is due to the fact that it has a high free energy level. So what we can see here is that during the resting or hyperpolarized state, the closed state is more stable than the inactive state, and the inactive state is more stable than the open state. So what about when we depolarize the cell? So when we depolarize the cell, what we see is something changed. And the change occurs um, in all of the states. So what we see here in the depolarized state is that the most stable state now is going to be the inactive state. The second most stable is going to be the open state, and the least stable state is the closed state. So this is why sodium channels open in the depolarized state. It's because the open state is more stable than the closed state in depolarized states. So therefore, the channel will open when the cell is depolarized. So what are the key takeaways from the energy diagram? In the resting hyperpolarized state, the closed state is more stable than the inactive state, and the inactive state is more stable than the open state. And in the depolarized state, we saw that the inactive state is the most stable, followed by the open state, and then lastly, the closed state. So in order to explain how this voltage-gated ion channel works, we're going to use a specific model called the Hodgkin-Huxley model. And the Hodgkin-Huxley model describes the mechanics and kinetics of voltage-gated channels. And the Hodgkin-Huxley model basically proposes that there are three states that this voltage-gated sodium channel can occupy. A closed state, an open state, and an inactive state. So the HHM, or the Hodgkin-Huxley model, also proposes there, that there are two types of gates in the voltage-gated sodium channel. The first gate is going to be called the M gate, and the M gates are called activation gates. And these activation gates, or M gates, are gates that open in response to depolarization, and they open really quickly. And the M gates also close to, in response to hyperpolarization, and they close quickly. So you can think of these M gates as 
gates that are really quick to open and really quick to close, and they open in response to depolarization, close in response to hyperpolarization. The H gates are called inactivation gates, and these are the slow gates. And these gates will tend to open in response to hyperpolarization and close in response to depolarization, and they do so very slowly. Now, in order for the channel to be open, all of these gates have to be open. So inside the voltage-gated sodium channel, what you'll see, according to the Hodg Hodgkin-Huxley model, is that there are four gates. The first three gates are the M gates or the activation gates. And remember that the M gates open quickly in response to depolarization and close quickly in response to hyperpolarization. The H gate is the inactivation gate and there's only one of them. And remember that the H gate will open in response to hyperpolarization and close in response to depolarization and they do so very slowly. Now each of these gates is independent of each other and they act independently of each other. So what does that mean? That means that if one M gate closes, we can still have another M gate open. Now each gate has its own probability of being open. And in order for the channel to be open, all four gates must be open. So in order for the channel to pass current, the, all the M gates have to be open and the H gate has to be open. So we can calculate the probability of a um, voltage-gated sodium channel being open by basically multiplying the individual probabilities for each of the gates of being open. So this right here would give you the probability of a voltage-gated sodium channel being open. We multiply all the probabilities of the M gates being open at a certain voltage and the probability of the H gate being open at a certain voltage. So now let's put it all together. So we're going to do a mock experiment, and we're going to um, send out a depolarizing voltage. And we can see here that we have the depolarizing step voltage. And what we're going to do is look and see what, how these gates will react to this voltage change. So at rest, what we will tend to see is that all of the M gates will be closed in the voltage-gated sodium channel, and the H gate will be open. So this channel is closed, so no current is passing through it. This channel is closed, but not inactive. So as we send the stimulus out, as we see here, what we'll see is that shortly into the stimulus, the M gates will rapidly start opening, as we see here. So the M gates are quick to open in response to depolarization. And by the time we get all the way to the top, so all the way to the top of the stimulus, all of the M gates are opened and the voltage-gated sodium channel is now passing current. So what we see here in this first little half of the experiment is that the M gates tend to be closed at rest and the H gates tend to be open at rest. And as we depolarize the cell, the M gates quickly open, allowing, volt allowing the sodium to flow through. Now, as we keep this depolarization going, what we'll tend to see late in the depolarization is that the H gate will close. And this is because, once again, remember that the H gate closes in response to depolarization, but it does so very slowly. So when we take the stimulus off, which is seen right here, what we will see is that the M gates will rapidly close. So the M gates rapidly close, causing the channel to be both closed and inactive. And then at, um, uh, several seconds after we take off the stimulus, the H gates open back up again, because remember the H gates open in response to hyperpolarization and they do so slowly. So in summary, what we see here is that at rest, the channel tends to be closed, but not inactive. When the cell is depolarized early into that depolarization, what we will see is that all of the M gates will be opening. The H gates will still be open because they're slow to close and, and the current will be passing through it. Late into the depolarization, we enter into the inactive state. So this is the inactive state. 
And during the inactive state, the H gates close in response to the depolarization, and remember they do so slowly, so no current is passing through it. Then when we take the stimulus off, the M gates rapidly close. The H gates still are closed because they're still slow to open, and no current is passing through. And then as we wait a couple seconds after the stimulus, the H gates eventually open again, causing the cell to go, causing the channel to go into a closed state. So right we see here is a closed state. So this is the closed state. This is the open state. And these two are the inactive state. Now, understanding this is critical for understanding action potentials. And we're going to see this again once we do the action potential video. So I hope this made sense to you. This is a very hard topic. But if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.